For all of those looking to beat the market, no matter what level you are, I highly recommend reading this book. It's written in very simple terms and can be read and understood by probably a primary school kid, but simple sometimes can be the most effective. I'm going to take five of the biggest concepts of the book and elaborate on them. Let's say I've got my own business, and I've had it for a while. It's called Cooper's Steakhouse, and I come up to you, the investor, and I say, I'm selling it for $10 million. You say, I'll think about it. Fast forward six months, and I come up to you again, actually I've changed my mind, I'm selling it for $20 million. Has my business value actually doubled? Uh, well, that's highly unlikely. I've been in business for a while now. Six months is hardly enough time to double my earnings, double my assets, and double my business value. Well, this is exactly what is going on in the stock market. It's going up and down daily, and over the course of the year, we see dramatic changes in business prices. Look at Abercrombie & Fitch. In August 2017, the company was selling for $0.6 billion. Fast forward five months later, and in January, it's selling for $1.4 billion. That's a dramatic change in just five months. So, the stock market is volatile, and it can change in price dramatically over the short term. Concept 1. The market is volatile, and this leaves opportunities to purchase businesses at very low prices. Our job as investors is to purchase those businesses when they are dirt cheap, trading well below their intrinsic value. Let's go back to Cooper Steakhouse. As you can recall, I'm now selling the business for $20 million. But obviously you, as the investor, want to know a bit more. Okay, well my business generates $5 million of profits a year. Well that seems really good. You pay $20 million and you get $5 million back. A 25% return on the price you paid. But you know that there's more companies out there. Cooper Steakhouse is not the only business for sale. So you have a look at some of the other businesses. Mary's Tea Shop is also selling for $20 million. Well, let's see what old Mary has to say. She says her business is generating $1 million of profits a year. That's a 5% return, you think. Not the best of deals. Cooper Steakhouse is generating a 25% return. And this is Greenblatt's definition of a cheap business, one that you're paying a little price for compared to the earnings it's bringing in. This is called earnings yield. Concept 2. Our way of finding dirt cheap businesses is screening those down to ones that have a low price compared to their earnings. Okay, Cooper's Steakhouse wants you to know more about their great business. Whenever they make an investment in a new steakhouse, it costs them around $2 million. And each new store that they make brings in $1 million of profit. That's a 50% return on each store. This is known as return on capital employed. Now let's say Mary's Tea House invests in a new shop that also costs them $2 million. But that investment only generates $100,000 of profit. That's a 5% return, not nearly as good as Cooper's Steakhouse. So this is Greenblatt's definition of a good business, one that brings in high returns on their assets or high returns on capital employed. The third main concept, invest in a good business, aka ones that generate a high return on capital employed. Mr. Greenblatt then combines concept two and concept three into a magic formula. So he finds businesses that have the best earnings compared to their price and the best return on capital employed and ranks them. So there are two ranking factors that he combines. Ranking factor one, Greenblatt starts with the list of the biggest 3,500 companies in the US. He then ranks these businesses, number one being the best company with the best earnings yield and number 3,500 being the worst one. Ranking factor two, he does the same, but this time for return on capital employed. Number one being the best return on capital employed and you understand, number 3,500 the worst. He then simply combines these two ranking factors to find the best company. Concept 4, the company with the best earnings yield and return on capital employed combined is the winner. If you want to use this magic formula as your investment strategy, I'll leave a description on how to do that in the comments. Throughout the book, he has a number of sections with evidence that the magic formula does actually beat the market. From 1998 to 2004, the book was written in 2005 by the way, the magic formula achieved a return of 30.8%, whereas the market average was 12.3%. That's pretty impressive. 
I'll let you guys do your own research of whether the magic formula works, but over the long run the evidence is pretty conclusive to it beating the market. Now this could be the most important concept of the lot. It starts with B and ends in leave. The magic formula makes intuitive sense by companies that are cheap and are actually good businesses. These are the things that you want in a business you own, is it not? The magic formula has years of evidence behind it to show that it beats the market. But in order to do so you have to stick with the strategy. Sometimes it will take a year or even three years of sticking with the strategy to see it overtake the market. That's not easy to stick with as an investor. Most might wait a year or even two and think to hell with the strategy it's not beating the market. But it is those that stick with it that end up doing very well against the market. Concept number five believe in the formula. And that's that, if you want to buy this book I'll leave a link in the description. If you're going to start using this strategy you'll probably need to read the full book to fully know the power of the formula. Also guys don't forget to subscribe to grow your knowledge on investing in the stock market. Thank you.